probably seen the image a thousand times. Maybe you've seen it on the front lawn of a church. Chances are you've seen it in a famous painting. You probably remember it on the front of a greeting card from Easter, or maybe you were struck by it in a movie. It's a sight familiar to almost everyone, the image of three crosses raised high on a hill. And when we think of those three crosses, of course, we think of Jesus. But he wasn't the only one to die at the hands of the Romans on that dark day. On either side of Jesus hung a thief, each sentenced to death for his crimes. The Bible doesn't tell us their stories. It doesn't record their specific crimes. We don't even know their names. So the Messiah has ascended to his throne. I hope he enjoys his view. You be sure to hang him higher than us, you dogs. We don't want to offend the king. But we do know that one of them had a brief but remarkable conversation with Jesus. A conversation that changed everything for him, even at the door of death. I understand that we can really only speculate about what his life was like. There's no real historical data to draw from. And oral tradition just doesn't tell us much. I don't know where he's from. I don't know if he had a family. We don't know if he had any friends. It, it doesn't appear that he did, at least not until today. So maybe he was a, a vile criminal who committed heinous crimes. Maybe not. I mean, maybe his was just a string of bad luck. He made some mistake when he was young and never recovered from it. We don't know. But if I were to speculate about his life, I guess I'd be drawn to a story of someone who didn't deserve the punishment they received. I'd like to think that his story went something like this. He was born into a family by accident. His mother didn't know his father, and his father didn't even know he had a son. Not that he would have cared. He was drunk more than he was sober. In his early years, there were men in and out of his home. He knew only abuse and rejection. And at age five, his mother abandoned him to the streets. But somehow, through such darkness, he grew to be a kind boy who would often take care of the younger children on the street. By the time he was 12, he was running a makeshift orphanage in a back alley. One night, he was rummaging through some garbage to find food for the young children, and to his delight, he found a loaf of bread that was virtually untouched. As he was running it back, he was stopped by a Roman guard who accused him of stealing the bread. He was arrested, thrown in prison. He continued to face injustice in prison, and then one day, he witnessed a Roman guard beating a helpless old man to the point of death. He stepped in, he fought with the guard, the guard pulled out his sword, and in the scuffle, the guard was killed. And that's what led up to this day. A series of unfortunate events. He doesn't deserve this, he deserves a break, he deserves justice. Again, we don't really know that that was this man's story. I'd like to think so. There's something within me that always roots for the underdog that wants to see injustice made right. And so maybe this is the way it unfolded. After all, people like that were always drawn to Jesus. Whether it was a blind man on the side of the road, or a leper who Jesus made whole by the power of his touch. Social outcasts found themselves with him. They found purpose and meaning in their life in him. Whether it was a despised tax collector who was invited to be a follower, or a rejected prostitute who was allowed to worship him in public, or a hated Roman official that Jesus complimented for his faith. And I don't know, maybe you've always felt like you have two strikes against you. Maybe you felt like you never had a fair shake in this life. Well, you would have liked Jesus, and he would have liked you. The Bible says in the Psalms that God is a father to the fatherless. He has always had a soft spot for the down and out, for the underprivileged and the overlooked. And so maybe that was this man's story. Maybe this thief on the cross next to Jesus was God's final declaration to right what had been wronged, to love the unloved. Maybe that was the story. I'd like to think so. I'm most comfortable with a story like that. I like the idea of a good person having something good happen to them. After all, that's how most of us think of ourselves, as pretty good people who deserve a pretty good life. But was that this man's story? I doubt it. I know we can only speculate. But my guess is that his story went 
something more like this. He was born into a family where he was loved and provided for. His mother would sing to him as he fell asleep at night. His dad had plans of teaching him the family business, but he took it all for granted. He didn't appreciate his mom. He was sure he could do better than his dad. And so when he was a teenager, he told off his parents and he took off. He was getting by day to day, stealing food and clothes and anything else that caught his eye. After he had been on the street for a few years, he gained a reputation for violence. He hurt who he wanted to hurt. He took what he wanted to take. He lived for himself, no concern for others. One evening, he led a group of men and ambushed a wealthy merchant's caravan. The raid was a success. It brought so much wealth that his conscience didn't even register the fact that the merchant, his wife, and their two children were all murdered in the attack. He celebrated with a three-day drinking binge. And when he woke up, he found himself surrounded by a dozen Roman guards. He had spent the last number of weeks on death row, angry and bitter. <laughs> and now he hangs on a cross, an eye for an eye. He had this coming for a long time. Whatever this man's crimes, an evil criminal with a 11th hour pardon, seems to be the most likely scenario. Matthew 27 says that the two criminals said cruel things about Jesus. Two criminals. Initially, he started off like the others, mocking and taunting Jesus. I think it's important to understand that he would have at least heard of Jesus before, that he would have heard about this carpenter turned prophet, Maybe his cellmate was in a crowd the day that Jesus took a few fish, a couple loaves of bread, and fed thousands. Or maybe he used to steal from the cup of the blind man on the side of the road, and then one day he comes by, the blind man isn't there anymore, and someone explains that Jesus had stopped by there. Whatever he had heard about Jesus, it's important to note that his initial response to Jesus was a negative one. If he had heard about the miracles and the healings, he must have been a skeptic. If he had heard of the hope restored and lives transformed, maybe he thought, it's too late for me. If he had heard of the acceptance and the forgiveness that Jesus offered, this man must have decided that he didn't deserve it. Or maybe he thought, I don't need it. Whatever he thought of Jesus when Jesus arrived at Golgotha, this man dismissed him and then mocked him. But whatever he thought of Jesus was changed during those six hours on the cross. Whatever his impression was of Jesus before that day, it was changed when he saw him die. He may not have been an eyewitness to the life of Jesus, but on the cross, for six hours on that Friday, what he saw changed him.
forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. on a cross by nails in his hands and feet, though he was fighting for every breath, though he could feel his life slipping away, something the thief saw in Jesus that day reached him, touched him, changed him. What was it? Was it the way Jesus endured the torture of the nails and the abuse of the soldiers, the taunting of the crowd, without ever once lashing out in anger himself? Or maybe it was the way Jesus spoke to Mary. Jesus is enduring the most excruciating pain imaginable, and yet he is thoughtful of his mother. He wants to see that she is taken care of and protected. What selfless love. Woman. This is your son. John. This is your mother. Maybe it was that moment when the thief saw such love that he thought to himself, is it possible that he could love me too? But I wonder if what turned his heart around was the very first thing Jesus said on the cross. His prayer was that God would forgive, forgive them all. Whatever it was, something touched him that day. His heart was changed. And in that moment, he did something that Peter ran from, the rest of the disciples had hid from, that Pilate had washed his hands of. He stood up for Jesus. He stood up for Jesus when Jesus was most alone. In the moment of Jesus' life, when he felt abandoned, even by his heavenly Father, a common thief came to his defense. Remember me when you enter your kingdom. I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. the thief is dying on the cross next to Jesus, what's he saying? He's saying, I have sinned, I was wrong. As his life is ebbing away, 
he is broken and he is repentant. And he confesses with his mouth that he believes that Jesus is who Jesus claimed to be. There was a song years ago that was sung during the Easter season called, Were You There? One of the verses simply goes like this. Were you there when they nailed him to a tree? I've often wondered what it would have been like to be there. I'm not the only one. One of the most famous paintings of the crucifixion scene is by the artist Rembrandt. At first glance, his painting, it seems to me like all the others. Three crosses, a hill, some soldiers. But upon closer inspection, you realize it's very different. Amidst all the people dressed in first century clothing, there's one person dressed strangely in modern day clothes. It is the artist himself. Rembrandt painted himself into the scene. I don't know much about the thief who was crucified next to Jesus that day. But of all the people who were there, I think I have the most in common with him. Here's a man who was set free and he was saved and he did nothing to deserve it. That's my story too. If you were to paint yourself into the crucifixion story, who would you be? I was there, because like the thief, I've come to realize my own failures and my own mistakes. The Bible says that all of us have sinned and we've all missed God's standard for our lives. Instead of coming clean with our sins, we tend to justify ourselves or rationalize what we do. We compare ourselves to other people in the hopes that they'll make us somehow look better. But deep down, we know the truth. We've all sinned. The thief. He knew that, and like him, I've come to realize my own sins. My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? I was there. Because like the thief, I have found that what I deserve for my sins is death. My sins condemn me. The Bible teaches that the wages of sin is death, and that all of us have sinned. It's the punishment I have coming for what I've done. I'm not proud of that. I wish it wasn't the case, but it's the truth. And as he hung on the cross in agony, the thief realized that truth. I know my own sin. It has condemned me to death, a physical death in this life and a spiritual death in the next. I'm thirsty. I was there because like the thief, I've come to understand that I can't save myself. And that's a tough one. We want to be strong. We want to be self-sufficient. And so even though we're dying in our own sins, there's part of us that screams, I don't need help. I'll save myself. We can be more like the thief on the other side of Jesus. We refuse to humble ourselves and cry out to God for salvation. Father, I place my spirit in your hands.
finish them. Let's go. And I was there because, like the thief, I have been given the promise of eternal life. The Bible says the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And so Jesus speaks to this thief and says, Today you will be with me in paradise. And in that moment, the worst day of his life became the best day of his life. And so one day in heaven, I will find this man that I have so much in common with, and I will say to him, what he did for you, he did for me.